Hello everyone, welcome to this Siemens i7-1200 safety controller series video. In this video, I will mainly introduce the safety program for the safety e-stop and the gate switch. And in the previous video, we introduced the hardware diagram and the hardware configuration for the Siemens i7-1200 safety input and output module. And we used the Scenario 19 example library as a base. In this video, I will quickly introduce the sample program from this Scenario 19 program. More importantly, I will mainly introduce my programming style for the e-stop as well as uh, the gate switch program. I will basically set up uh, one safety structure. You could use this uh, structure for your reference for your safety project. Okay, let's start. From the scenario 19 library, according to the drawing showing the screen, so it has a IP2 function block. And inside this uh, IP2 function block, it has a e-stop function block and door switch function block and uh, feedback function block. So let me show the detail. Let's double click this IP2 and uh, look at the inside of the logic. So let's look at the e-stop first. So the e-stop connect to the channel, the channel which is uh, this. This is the input of this uh, function block. To quickly search all the reference within this function block, you can click, right click, and uh, select this go to. Find this next point of use and the previous point of use. Uh, usually, well, I will use this uh, two short key, Control Shift uh, plus G or Control Shift uh, plus F. So you can quickly find out the previous one and after the reference point for this tag. The acknowledge necessary select the true, which means if the e stop pressed and the output will go off, and after the e stop released, the output of this function block will not be recovered automatically. We must uh, click this uh, acknowledge and then recover the safety status. After the acknowledge, the output of this function block will recover from off to on. So that is the e-stop. Let's go to the safety door here. If we recall the previous video, the hardware configuration in the safety input module for these two channels, we select 1001 evaluation. So at this input one and two, there are two individual channels here. And this Q byte signal connect that uh, value state. Also, this uh, safety door function block need an uh, acknowledge signal here. So it connect this, acknowledge. And let's go to the output. From the outside, from the IP1, we can see the K1, K2, that is the output of this uh, IP2 function block. That Q17.0 is a safety output control to that relays. Okay, so let's go inside of this function block. And this is the K1, K2 output. So if we press the control shift plus G, so it will go next. So we can see this K1, K2 output controlled by this feedback output. That is uh, the EDM feedback function block. Basically, if that relay has a external device monitoring function, that EDM signal come back. Basically, we will use this uh, feedback function block connect the output control signal to that relay. This is the control signal for this uh, output. And uh, because this uh, safety relay has a uh, EDM signal, that is the feedback from the K1 and the K2 relay. That is a normal closed signal. So they are read back K1 and the K2. Which means before you give an on on this ON channel to control this K1 and the K2, your feedback signal must on already. And once you give an on on this ON channel, after a certain time, this feedback K1 and the K2 on this channel must be go off. That means 
that relay get the signal and the coil gonna energized and then the normal closed contact will be opened so this signal will go off so which means this feedback has a certain timing chart inside it need you look at the detail of the description of this function block we click the f1 go to the help of this function block so it explained here which means the feedback must be on already and then once your on give a one to this control signal your output will go to on in addition if you already give a on signal but in a certain time that feedback is still on haven't got off yet so that will be a feedback error so your control output will from on to off so please look at this detail of this description sometimes you will find you give a on signal to this on but the function block output will just give you a pause signal to the output that's because your feedback signal is time out that's because this feedback timing must be set carefully usually we will set 200 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds because if this time is too low especially for this function block by default the time for this uh, feedback time that is a zero if we use it directly most of time it won't be enabled on this output just because this feedback time is too short as we know this relay that is a mechanical system so it does need a, a time to react and give a feedback signal to this uh, feedback so usually maybe it take the 100 or 200 milliseconds there's a whole signal loop and the plus the mechanical coil reaction that's why usually this feedback time will be set 200 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds and this q byte fio signal will connect with a k1 k2 value status so that is the output function block usually in the siemens system to control the output relay we will use this uh, feedback function block connect the output until here to implement a uh, emergency stop and uh, this uh, safety door without the guarding locking function especially for this uh, OSD door switch so uh, that's already enough from this uh, safety program here but if you look at the detail of this uh, safety logic so you will find that there's a start button here actually the control logic are at a reside area to enable or give an on signal that rely on a start signal here it's a little bit weird put all the control logic at the reset area and to start it rely on a start button and because all the control conditions are at the reset area they must be negative uh, logic so it's a little bit weird because as I can see most of the safety projects in their cell there will be not specific start button especially for the safety start therefore the main meal of this video I will explain my safety program structure and my safety program style please follow me so I will create another function blocks so uh, I will temporarily leave this uh, example function block here eventually we will delete that so firstly I will add a new block keep in mind to select this uh, create a function block that is a safety function block select this uh, function block that is a safety and e stops menu let's start from 10 and letter logic Uh, in this uh, e stops function block we will program all the function block for e stops for example if your system has a uh, multiple e stop buttons we will program all the function block for the e stops here so for example the first of e stop we will drag e stop here 
Once you release, the system will pop up like this. If we select the individual or single DB for each function block, e style function block, they will have a, their individual DB. If we select the multiple instant DB, this FB10 instant DB will serve for all the e stop inside this uh, function block 10. So they will very clean. If we set an individual DB, uh, there will be a lot of uh, instant DB at the background. It will be a little mess. So most of the time, we will select the multiple instance. So because we will program multiple e style function block inside this uh, IB10, so we will select a multiple instance here. And the name, the first one, we will program for SCP MCP e stop which means this e stop button is at the MCP main control panel. Okay, so next, for example, we will drag another one, still select this multiple instance, the door switch e stop. This e stop is at the, the door switch, on the door switch. Or we could also have uh, this. For example, a robot e stop that is on the teach pendant, right? So we will program next. That is a robot TP teach pendant e stop. Select multiple instant. Okay, so we program the three function block here. So for here, this e stop. We can use this, select the e stop one, the 8.0. So we will still mainly use this uh, MCP, this channel 8.0 as an example. We will leave others as like this way. So for other e stop, you will need to connect the actual input channels for this e stop function block. And keep in mind, acknowledge necessary, especially for the e stop, we will select the true and we need to acknowledge signals for that. So I will add a one network. Let's create a tag here. So for this acknowledge, we will select the static. So select add a row, ACK, E stop. Drag to here. That is a bool signal. And this uh, e stop acknowledge signal we can control by a acknowledge button here. We will leave a we will leave this a contact here temporarily. So this acknowledge can acknowledge all of them. And for this output, I will temporarily give a tag here. So for example, at the static area, I will I will create a three tags. MCP Q. So we create a three tags here. Let's drag this uh, tag to the function block. Connect the acknowledge signal to the all the e stop function blocks. Again, for this uh, door switch and the robot teach pendant, actually they need to connect the physical channel here. They are just an example. I will leave an empty here. Uh, maybe you will ask why we put a temporary tag here. That's because. If you go online and want to watch the condition of the e stop, if you put a tag here, you will see that signal is on or off. If there's no tag, you will not see the actual results here. It's hard for you to do the commissioning test and the troubleshooting. So this is uh, the three function block results here. And at the bottom, I will create another area named the output. So at this area, I will do this way. 
grab this output. Create another name that is MCP E stop Q, right? So at the interface output interface of this function block 10, we create a three individual underscore output signal for each E stop output. Those output signal could be used for showing on the HMI status. They will be used for other safety logic and program. At the end of this function block, we grab the E stop function block output to this uh, underscore output tags. Those tags will be used for other function block and other safety logic. So it looks like a little bit of duplicate task, a duplicate uh, job. However, the role of this uh, underscore Q and underscore output tags on the variables are very clear. The underscore Q variables will be only used within this function block and underscore output variables will be cross-used for other safety logic. Other than those uh, individual channel, usually we will also program this. So we connect the three results together. So give a global output. We summarize the e-stop result named sum underscore OK. It will be a very important variable used for other safety logic. So that is our e-stop function block, especially program the e-stop functionalities here. And the next, we will program the door switch, a new block. Door switch. Let's select the safety block, function block, and uh, select door switch. Okay, select the menu. That is uh, 11. Next, that's 11. Door switch. Okay, and from here, let's drag a door switch. That's the safety door. Okay, multiple instant and safety door instant. Let's say the gate one, right? We can name the different gate name. But usually one cell only have one door, or if uh, this is a big cell, usually it has uh, two safety doors uh, on the both sides. Okay, safety door here. And from here, we connect the channel, which is uh, exactly the same like uh, the example. For example, the channel one, we will select the, the OSSD one and the channel two, OSSD two. And the bad input will select the OSSD one value status but we need to reverse this logic. So we reverse this logic. And next one, that is the OSD2. Value status. And we also, we reverse this logic. Open necessary, that is true. Acknowledge necessary, that is true. This open necessary, which means, so your safety door must be open and closed uh, toggle this one time, that allows your safety door signal go on. So you can look at the detail. If we go to the search, you will see this. For the input one and two, they both take a signal go off priori to opening the door. So you can look at the detailed description I hear. So this acknowledge, so we will set a static value here, say, so that is the ACK CP door, okay? And that is a bool. And let's drag it here, okay? We'll create another network.
drag this uh, acknowledge safety door here. And this signal will leave the for uh, signal come from the standard PLC. That is a acknowledge button. Okay. So the output for this uh, safety door, we will name, copy this name. We will name it static, give a safety door G1 Q. Okay, and from here, we will use this uh, queue. That's only for the internal of this function block, and we will output to outside. So, the, so for this output, we will set this tag at the output here. Named output. Okay, till here we finish the IB10 and the IB11 e-stop and the gate switch. So next, let's create the output area. And output, usually we call that uh, station enable. So let's create a new function block. Enable. Okay, manual. This time I will name it 20 because I would like to use the like a 10, 11, 12, 13 for door switch, light curtains, two hand switch for other input safety component. And from 20, we will leave for different station enables. Okay, for this station enable, for example, uh, this run can be used for the tool inside the to tools inside the cell. Tool inside the cell. Okay. So let's record this application background. To enable the tool inside the cell, the door must be closed and all the stops must be enabled, right? So, which means in the logic, we will program couple inputs and control our enable signal. So, which means this can be connected with the e-stop sum, okay, from other function block. So, to use the signal or variables comes from other function blocks, we need to use the, the signals or variables inside the instance of DB of those function blocks. So we need to use the IB1 call IB10 and IB11 to create the instant DBs. All right, let's go to the IB1 to call IB10 and IB11 to create the instant DBs. We still temporarily leave this IB2 here. So let's drag this uh, E stops here. And let's manually name this uh, DB10. And personally, I will prefer to call SDB SDB because that is a safety DB, right? So click the OK. OK, we call this a e-stop function block. And we call the next door switch here. And because this is a IB11, I will prefer call the same name. That is a, the DB. And uh, that is the door switch SDB. But this time, this is our functional wise the, the DB. So uh, I will prefer to use the, the signal distance for this uh, a big FB here. Okay, here. So firstly, let's uh, compile it. It will pop up error, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if you recall the output from this e stop, it has a uh, the MCP e stop, door switch e stop, and the robot twitch pendant e stop. Also, it has a e stop sum. Okay, from this door switch function block, it has an output door switch result here. So let's go back to the station enable here, and we will use the safety global or sum okay signal, right? And if you recall that uh, e stop. DB, that's the DB10, 
So this DB name, that's the E stops underscore SDB. So let's type in E stops SDB dot. Let's use this output. Which output? That is uh, the sum, okay. Okay, that is here. E stops underscore sum, okay signal here. And next, that's the door switch result. That is a door switch SDB dot which output that is a, the underscore output. I will leave this temporarily here. And this output, we can temporarily give a name. That name, we can name it because we are going to enable the tool inside, right? So let's name it um, tool enable command. OK, and uh, grab here. And this signal will give a enable signal to this uh, tool enable. And to control the tool enable relays, so we will use the feedback. Go to the city, find out the feedback, which is here, grab it to here. And select this uh, multiple instant because we are in the station enable FB20. For this uh, feedback instant, let's call this uh, feedback tool. Enable. Feedback tool enable. Click OK. And this on signal, we will use this command. Right? And this feedback, they are the similar as our example. Let's open up the IP tool. So to control the safety output, the feedback is here. We use it as a reference. And feedback, that is, a, we need a feedback one and the feedback two. That is a read feedback K1 and a read feedback K2. here. And the Q byte FIO and the Q byte FIO, I will select normal closed this input here. Also acknowledge necessary, we will select two. Acknowledge, we need an acknowledge signal. So the first run, let's put the logic like this. And from this, we will name uh, acknowledge ACK uh, feedback. CK station enable. We will use this. For acknowledge station enable. So this enable signal will controlled by a simple input here and connect this, connect this. Acknowledge, give a knowledge to this feedback. And this feedback time, I will input a feedback time, let's say 300 millisecond. And this output, usually I will prefer this way. Firstly, I will give a Q result here. So that is a that is a, the feedback tool enable Q. And in the next line, 
this enable queue will control the actual safety output that is uh, the safety queue that is a safety output uh, K1 and K2 output okay so let's connect drag to drag to the queue here okay and I leave a signal to this to enable this command according to our example so if your cell has a start button and that start button is especially for the safety enable signal we can put a start here for example we put that start button here and we latch in this start result okay once we give a start signal to this uh, enable it will latch in by itself give a enable signal once the e-star pressed or the gate switch opened so this command will drop it will drop this uh, output right also we can add this uh, qbat here means this channel must be okay status so with the e-stop and the door switch all the signals control this command and we could also add a rising edge here allows only rising edge of this start can trigger this command on let's drag a p trigger here and let's add a, a start trigger go to the static and add a start p trigger and drag it here so with this logic it is very clear we can see what the signal can enable this uh, tool enable signal and the trigger signal that come from the start so by default even if your e-stop door switch and the channel are okay even if like that without this start the output is still off the system won't be enabled so once you press the start it will enable uh, if we compare the example logic from logic wheel these two styles are almost the same but personally i will prefer this way because this is a, like a positive logic from the lighter logic wheel it will be very easy for you to troubleshoot which signal is off cause this command cannot turn on but this logic because all the enable signal it is reversed it is a negative logic so sometimes it's hard for you to think about that especially sometimes to enable this tool the logic is a little bit complex so with this negative logic it is a little bit hard to organize this logic especially this area is not too big enough so that's why personally i will prefer to put the enable logic at the top of this function block and organize this enable logic and finally give a enable signal to here so that keeps this uh, function block, this area is uh, identical uh, because all the feedback logic is uh, similar like this way. All right. Or if your system doesn't have a start button, actually we can delete this area. So this also okay because if your system enable door switch okay and the channel are working properly so once it's on it's on right so if something drop without this acknowledge so if your system only have an acknowledge button that is actually most of the case for example if you look at this panel it only has a one acknowledge button on the panel and one e-stop on the panel so most of the cell actually it doesn't have a start button especially for the safety start actually it's rare to see the cell has a start button especially for the safety start so the control logic for the output control is like this style so it directly control this output and connect here and connect the output if 
the signal drop already. And once it's uh, recovered, this output will not recover automatically. That's because we said it's a true, we need to acknowledge first. So after the recover to on, once we give a acknowledge signal, so this output will turn on after. If the logic, they are very simple, actually you can put those logic directly come here. That's totally depends on your flavor. So that's my flavor. I, uh, I will prefer to put the logic at the top of this uh, feedback function block. And whatever the logic is simple or complex, we can organize this uh, command signal and give the command signal to this uh, feedback function block. And other than this, we still have a one left that is the acknowledge signal. So we will use a specific acknowledge signal within the function block and use this logic, transfer the actual acknowledge signal from outside to acknowledge the inside of this function block. For example, we will use the input acknowledge signal input 0.0, .0 to transfer to this function block acknowledge signal. Here, this is the same as a e-stop and uh, the door switch. We go to the door switch. At the top, we leave this acknowledge safety door here and go to the e-stops and come here. Connect this acknowledge e-stop here. Okay. Till here, we program the door switch e-stops and the station enable and the station enable, we are controlling a tool inside the cell. That tool are controlled by the e-stop results, door switch result, as well as the channel by itself. We also need to program a global acknowledge function block. So if we recall, go back to our example, at the bottom of this example program, there is a acknowledge global here. Once you trigger this ACK underscore GL function block, it will give you system acknowledgement signal for the simultaneous reintegration of all the safety input and output channels and modules after the communication error or modules got error or channels got false. Without using this acknowledge global function block, if your channel or module got passivated, Maybe the only way to recover the system that is a recycle power your safety controller. This will not be accepted by the factory manager. So a global acknowledge button is necessary on HMI or on the panel. Let's create one function block specially program this ACK underscore global acknowledgement function block. Because in this function block, we can also program the specific channel acknowledgement. So I will show this specific acknowledgement for the ET200SP when we talk about this topic. From here, I will call it reintegration. Select the menu, name it, uh, for example, 30. Click the OK. Reintegration. From here, let's uh, call this uh, ACK global. Okay, so we'll select this multiple instance, ACK global instance. Okay, this whole system we only need one ACK global signal. So connect this uh, acknowledge signal. Uh, personally, I will use this way. Still, let's uh, create a tag that is uh, ACK. This is the name of that uh, instant, right? We put an ACK here. So grab this here. And this actual ACK signal come from our input acknowledge signal, right? So, so that is uh, the reintegration IB30. Eventually, we need to go to the IB1, call all the function blocks. So we already call e-stops and the door switch. Next, let's call this uh, station enable. 
okay we name it because there's a station enabled that's the fb20 uh personally i will name use the same number on the db so station enable safety db okay and for this uh acknowledge redirect this uh, reintegration here and that number is a 30 so let's call 30 give a sdb here okay this is from the example actually till now we can delay this uh, example one and uh, all those uh, function block i'm using my style implement the same thing it looks like uh, we use the multiple function block and it seems like a complex than the example however i do believe that will be more fitable for your project especially for a little bit of complex safety control for example like this a uh, robot cell it has a light curtain e-stop and the turntable enables and robots usually in this cell it has a different e-stops from the mcp from the robot teach pendant or from the door switch also this cell has a door switch so maybe the cell has a two or three doors so you can program the different door inside this function block and for the output portion take this uh, cell as an example the safety enable signal will have uh, four groups one is for the robot in the cell one is for the turntable one is for the tooling inside the cell one is for the tooling towards outside the cell towards to the operator so the safety control for the tooling towards to the outside and this turntable need to consider this light curtains so with the current safety logic structure we have a different function blocks for different safety components and then in the station enable function block we can organize and use the different safety logic and components and program the conditions for different uh, safety control all right let's do a summary this video is the first programming video in this uh, i7-1200 safety controller series video and in this video we firstly introduced one demo program and that demo program come from the application scenario 19 and based on this uh, drawing the program we introduced that is a uh, fb2 come from the library and after that, I introduced my safety programming style and my safety structure. So this programming style separates the uh, e-stop, door switch, uh, light curtains, and the station enable signal, as well as the uh, reintegration, that global acknowledge button, separate them to different function blocks. Using this way, it is uh, flexible for you to organize the different signal from the e-stop, door switch, light curtains to control the station enable signals. Uh, in next video, I will show how we can use the light curtain, how we can program the light curtain, because according to this uh, robot cell background, the light curtain safety signals will be involved to control the turntable, the tooling towards to the outside, or the tooling towards to the inside so we need to use the different logic involve the light curtain signal so i will explain the detailed logic in the next video thank you for watching if you like this video please give me a thumb up if you like to watch more videos in my channel please subscribe see you in next video